What's up, everybody? Today is our Wednesday morning mastermind. Good morning, everybody. Um, today, the topic is how are you making progress in your life and your eBay business? Feel free to share anything with the group and uh, let us know what's going well, maybe some challenges. For me personally, I've been sick for the last four days. And whenever I get sick, I get super anxious and then I can't sleep and then it gets worse. And But it's been fine. Um, yesterday we sold 300 items the day before we sold 300 items. It's just going the same without me there for the most part. So it's fine, but I'm not feeling fine. So I'm going to try to figure out how to relax a bit and, um, I'm getting wrecked from daycare. Um, so I think I need to take, I don't know how to take better care of myself though. I already exercise. I eat healthy. I go to the doctor regularly. I don't know what else I can do to reduce the anxiety. Maybe get a psychologist. Uh, let's go with Max. Max, what are you doing to improve yourself? Um, me and Mark have gone over my photo station. Um, I've been timing myself with the photos and listings. I'm down from an hour and a half to 42. Now the record's 36. Trying to get it to 30 minutes. So we're at the um, hour for 10 listings. Okay. And we also switched the time of doing it to the morning and keeping it regularly scheduled. Okay. Um, yeah, I love that schedule. Also, guys, um, just a reminder, today the podcast, there is coaching for every level after that today. So 2 p.m. is the podcast, 3 p.m. is uh, coaching for all levels today. Let's go with Catherine. Catherine, what's, what's improving, what's good, or what's a challenge? Um, yesterday, I, I've known this all along. I got done early, and I could have got... I could have gotten done even earlier. So I had time to shovel the snow and work on some laundry. And um, and I had even increased my listings. My goal was 30 and I made it to 27. But um, it, it's motivated me to do the same today. Although today I'll be sourcing and yesterday I didn't. So I'll see how it goes today. Um, but that's been a goal of mine for a long time. And why I didn't do it sooner, I have no idea. Getting just, done just, I just getting wasted done. time not getting everything done like right away. Got it. So what's what switched? Why are you doing things right away now? Um, I had energy yesterday. <laughs> for some reason, I wasn't as tired as you. I, I'm, I take a medication that makes me tired. And um, I don't know. I just had a... a like, I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to sit down. I was just, I think part of it was starting to go through my death pile. I made it through like three huge tubs of items and I just wanted to keep going. Uh, maybe it's because it's the end of the year and I want to start fresh in January. I'm not sure what motivated me more yesterday, but I was on a roll and it felt so good. And it's so possible to do 30 listings and still be done by noon. So possible. And you've said that all along and I knew it and I just wasn't doing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the time I've wasted when I could have been doing other things. So what do you do with the extra time? I worked on a painting yesterday. I shoveled the driveway so my husband wouldn't have to do it in the dark when he got home. Hmm. Um, I made supper. I spent time with my daughter. Just, you know stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So I love it. Yeah, it was fantastic. So thank you for continuing great. to push me to do that. <laughs> and getting by, done by noon is great. Yeah. Mandy, what's up? What are you working on? Um, we are, plan we've been planning this month on leveling up on our listing goal. So we're going to a hundred plus starting January the day. So we've been putting, making sure our training and who's going to be responsible for what, putting uh, redundancies on team members and um, making sure my inventory flow is suffice for it. So okay. pretty, pretty, I'm just really excited. Um, my Nirvana finally, you know, like tax says 11 months when you level up. I started in January when we went up last. Yep. And I'm 
we're not at Nirvana yet. We do 60 and we're selling 50 a day. It's, it's, it's going up and up and up and up. So it took 11 to 12 months for eBay to catch up. So it's real interesting. I love it. So now that we're getting closer to Nirvana, we decided to go ahead and jump up. That's great. James, what's up? What are you working on? Uh, quite similar to what Catherine was saying, really trying to get my eBay day done quicker. So I'm now starting work at six o'clock instead of half seven. Um, and I try and get everything done by the time it comes to this call, um, which is allowing me a bit more um, time for myself. I've decided I'm going to take after this call, I'm going to take the rest of the afternoon off the wipes off. We're just going to sit on the sofa, watch a Christmas film and just relax because the last week or so has been quite intense. Um, but yeah, just starting earlier, managing to get more things done throughout the day. Less distraction as well when I start early in the morning. Um, I normally log on to the, the morning call and chat with the guys from around eight o'clock. Um, and so normally I like my listings to be near enough done where possible by then. I love it. People are getting done earlier. I think the schedule um, has really helped, Chris. So yeah, thanks again for that. Because I know we went through my schedule a while ago and just kind of having a plan of what needs to get done um and it's amazing how quick you can do it just by putting your head down and doing it because i feel with ebay you you know you've got to buy right but once you've got the items there it's pretty simple process i feel to list an item on ebay i think we complicate it sometimes so um yeah schedule does help i love it so guys i'm thinking about maybe um focusing on that if anybody wants to do their schedule let me know. I mean, there's basically we need to know what your goal is. How many listings do you want to do? And then we'll make a schedule for you. So customer service, picking, packing, shipping, photos, listing, sourcing, set up your schedule so that you're set up for success. And then we can do that in the morning calls. That's like one of my favorite things to do is figure out what people um, need to get done. And if you can get done super early in your day, I mean, you're killing it. Nancy, what's up? What are you working on? Good morning. Um, I'm um, I'm working on improving my store. I, um, I I'm ready to go to the next level because I did uh, quit my. Well, I'm going to be as of uh, the end of March of next year. I'm going to be full time in eBay, so mm -hmm. or a full time reseller. So I need to get in and see why I am not selling more. I'm um, my store is at about 900. I'm selling about three and a half a day and I'm listing eight a day. I have not list, missed my listing goal ever since uh, sometime in March. So, and I'm consistent, I get everything done. I'm up at 5 a.m. I get everything done before this call. I get my shipping done, I get uh, my listings done and up and everything is, is done. So I'm, I have no problems with the consistency, but I need to get into my store and find out uh, what is going on. I've had, I've had some recommendations, which I'm going to work on. And uh, I feel like I've been, since I've made the decision to go full time, I feel like I'm a lot more consistent. I, I know I, I'm, I'm finding out what I need to do and I'm, and I'm doing it instead of procrastinating about it. So um, I feel like next year is going to be a really good year, but I do need to get in and figure out um, why I'm not selling more because I kind of feel like it, it makes sense to um, at least be somewhere at Nirvana before I grow my store. Okay. I don't want to increase my listing goal and I'm only selling a couple a day. It just doesn't make sense. That's really smart. You want to, how many are you listing and how many are you selling each day? Um, I'm listing eight a day. I, I actually draft uh, 11. So, and I launch eight a day. And like yesterday, I only sold one. The day before I sold eight. So it's, it, I mean, it's, it's not consistent. I know it won't be, but on an average every month, I'm selling about three and a half per day. If I look at it um, in a 30 day chunk. That's great. So you just want to increase that a tad? Yes. Okay. Before I, before I, increase my listing goal, I think I should be selling through more. And if there's a problem in my store, I want to get it fixed before I, I do that. That's really smart. Yeah, we always recommend playing it safe and maybe get to five sales a day before you grow. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, let's see. Hanley is asking, what is everyone with kids doing about a schedule when the kids are on holiday from school? Mine are too small to be left on their own devices while I work. Um, I think you have to do it when they are asleep, 
like I have to take care of my daughter this week because she has a, she's sick and um, like when she's awake you can't work <laughs> I don't know how else to do it um, she's too little to even even if you um, resort to like an iPad um, I don't think they can be alone for more than like 15 minutes and you have to be in the room so it's almost like before or after what do you guys think? Should you lower your listing goal if you have to take care of your kids that way? How do you do it? Or you just grind it out when they're asleep? You can't do it when they're awake. Grind it out. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta grind it. Yeah, I think so. Hamley's gonna move her schedule to nighttime instead of daytime. I agree. Yeah, our child care has 22 days off a year. Um, so we just got to make it work on those days. Oh, Sally says plan for it like a vacation. That's a great idea. Maybe you just realistically can't. So you have to use your draft bank on those days. That makes sense. Sally, what are you working on? What's improving? I kind of feel like the kid who sits in the back of the class and doesn't want to make eye contact because she's afraid the teacher will call on her and you did. Dang. Um, Chris, I, I just hesitate to tell you because you've given me all the answers. First of all, the things that are going right is uh, I, I'm, I've increased my listing to seven a day. My sales are still good. I'm probably selling five a day right now. My average sale price is up, but my schedule just is sucking. I have sacrificed everything to get the store fixed and get each piece done. And now I'm back to where the pieces aren't playing well together. My schedule, for example, is I get up at five and take care of myself in the house at a, at six o'clock. I'm ready to go. And while I'm talking to you, I quit using the bank because I figure that's costing me another, you know, $30 a month. So I am, I, push the go button on my seven new listings. Then I connect the listings I've done yesterday with the photographs I took yesterday and I put them in the bank. So, and that this is where it's, it gets squirrely. What I'm doing as far as listing, I think that's where the hole is, shipping's going fine, is at home, I look at the things to make sure they're good to go. And I put a pink tag on them. I know it's silly. Then I go to the office. I take my pink tag items with me. And I either list and photograph them at the same time. Or I just list them. Or I just photograph them and do the listing. I, I've got this whole listing and photographing thing ass backwards, I think. But anyway, I'm spending about seven and a half hours a day to get seven stinking listings up. And I'm just beat. I can't hear you. I said, but you're getting getting it done, and you're getting it done earlier. Well, uh, no, because at night, then I come back and I kind of clean up my workspace here, and I pick out which items I'm going to deal with the next day. So I didn't hear the first part of what you said. I just need to now concentrate, I think, on looking back at all everything you've already told me about the most effective way to prep items and photograph them and list them. I think that's because I've just got it so spread out through the day that it's it's just not working. Can you do it all in a row? I, I might be able to. I, do, I hate to waste time. So while I'm sitting talking to you, it seems like a really good time to push the the button, the list button on the seven items I want to do today. Yeah. And since I've got another 45 minutes after that, at least, to go ahead and connect the draft uh, text listing part with the photos and that's pretty easy i can get that all done within an hour with easily within an hour mm. and with the time left over i look around and i say okay what items have i brought home that i need to make sure they're good to go so when i go down later i can list them so i, I don't know i'm going to keep track but i think i'm going to do a time study on myself um where i just say i don't think i know what i'm doing all day so I'm not being interrupted. I can't blame anybody else. Have no kids. Uh, have help. So I think, Chris, I'm going to commit to making a time study because I can't tell you enough for you to even know what I'm doing wrong right now, I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean, 
everyone should do an audit of their time and, and let us know what you're doing exactly. You could, put a, you could put a GoPro on your head for one day and just film yourself and see what you're doing the whole day. Then I would get obsessed with, does this sweater make my ass look, big? my butt look <laughs> So I know I just need to just be old school, have a piece of paper with quarterly hour times on it between 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. and say, what are you doing? And then look at it and find out what makes sense as far as rearranging that day. I have, I just, you know, I have a, I don't have any real excuses. I have a condition, but I deal with it. So I just need to look at the whole picture instead of concentrating. I've got the little parts working well, and I just need to make them sing in harmony. Gabby is asking what to do if your schedule is different every day. Gabby, can you chat? Um, how many different days do you have? Is it different literally all seven days, or is it just like weekends are different than weekdays? I don't know. It's yeah, it's pretty much different every day. Like my my daughter goes to preschool just two days a week, and then I go into work one day a week. So it's it's almost different every day. Then you definitely need a, a schedule every day. Otherwise, if you have a schedule that's different every day, it's so easy to waste time. Because if you have the same schedule every day, you just get used to it. But if you have a different schedule every day, literally like three hours will go by because you have nothing scheduled for that time. Um, yeah, you have to make a weekly schedule and adjust all of the different, um, like you have to make a schedule like this where you go over all your different days. But for me, um, there, I only have three different days. Monday through Friday is the same. Sunday is different and Saturday is different. But you have to adjust it. And I guess every day is a little bit different, but I just have it all scheduled out so I can just do it. So even though I'm sick and even though I'm doing, um, taking care of the baby, I still know what I need to get done every day. Uh, but I, I recommend a weekly schedule. Let's see. Let's go with Caleb. Caleb, can you chat? What are you working on? Hey, Chris. Uh, I am working on, right, right now I'm working on a couple things. Um, hi, trying to hire a few people. I'm letting the first person I hired go today because he wasn't working out and then working on getting a warehouse. So those are really two things. Everything's going well, just scaling up. How much space do you want? Well, I was thinking about that. I think I want four to 6,000 square feet. I'm trying to, so I'm trying to, right now I have a barn out back that I store my items in a spare room that I work in. And I'm trying to skip, if I can, the storage unit phase. Because I can afford, you know, a warehouse up here where I live that's that size. Um, but it's kind of difficult. I don't know if you have any advice. I'm, I, I kind of figured I got to do a few things all at once, which was getting enough inventory, which I've kind of nailed down with suppliers, but then I'm, that's why I'm trying to um, train and hire at least one person right now. So when I have the extra space, I can jump right up into listing more items and I don't have to, you know, have the extra space and find someone and train them and, and go a little bit slower that way. Um, and so it's kind of like trying to do, I feel like three things at once <laughs> because it's all based on, you know, getting that extra, as soon as I guess, as soon as I have that extra space, I want to be able to use it and um, as efficiently as I can. What's your current listing goal? Um, I do, I do 50 a day. Um, I take weekends off. So it ends up being 70 Monday through Friday. I love it. So um, let me see here. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend starting earlier if you can with hiring, because it takes a long time. And then it's just got to be modular. Like they do the same thing every day. That's the key to an employee. If it's different every day, they won't last. Yeah. Have you found that like, you just have to try people out several people and let go. I don't, I, the, the first person I hired, he just, um, he was, you know, real nice, real respectful. I wanted it to work out, but he, he just couldn't get some of the concepts and it's all real simple stuff. Um, nothing I do is complicated. It's pretty much how tech does it. And what was, um, the, 
what was he not getting? Just like the difference between first class and priority, you know, because I had him doing shipping first and, and it's a lot of packages, you know, it's about 50 a day. And, um, and like, you know, he, he knows the difference. It's not an intelligence thing. He, he knows under one pound is this, but he just like didn't have the focus for like all 50 packages. And, and he would occasionally do one, you know, that's supposed to be first class priority or one that's supposed to be priority, just hit the first class button. He sent one out, you know, media mail too, which, which he never used. Just kind of a lack of focus on that. And I, I, and I try to work with him, you know, for, uh, it, it's been, it's been two weeks and, and then I, so, and, and to be honest, I don't really think he want. I think his, uh, I don't really think he wants a job. He's just, <laughs> I think it's, he's, uh, he's, he's a younger kid. So he's about, uh, 18. And I think his parents mainly want him to work and, and that may be part of the problem. Um, he doesn't need the job or anything. So uh, I don't know, but I don't know if you, if you find this, that, that's pretty common where you have to try several people before you get one that that sticks. I had a good interview with a uh, person this weekend that I think hopefully will work out, but uh, have you found that to be the case with, with hiring? Yeah. I basically, if you, you should be able to do the job the first day. So shipping right. is usually easier to, to, um, to hire, but I have, um, I immediately fire people who don't have attention to detail. Like you need to make zero mistakes during shipping. Yeah. Yeah. And like my first day, like I, I thought of that and I kind of knew I should have, but it, it was my, like, you know, I kind of was giving him the benefit of the doubt because maybe I'm bad at training or something like that. But I, I kind of thought the same thing, like you either can do that or not. So, so yeah, that, that makes sense. This thought uh, that tech has, which is, um, you want to hire people that you would regret if they leave. And I only have, yeah, actually I have two workers like that, that I would regret if they left. So like, it's just a personality. Type. I think if they um, turn the lights off when they leave automatically, that person you want to keep. Yeah. I had, a, that's, that's, it's funny you said that. Cause I had to ask like um, two or three times, you know, explain, Hey, you know, when you leave, turn the lights off and like, the second day like it wasn't done and i was like you know lights off when you leave just yeah simple things like that like it is it's, it's like i said it's not an intelligence thing it's just a you know a matter of focus like i get my seven-year-old son helps me out and he knows how to do shipping so <laughs> i kind of think it's it's pretty simple but yeah so looking looking for that right person i understand it it may take a while i may have to try out a few people if you got any um you know any advice on that that's that's the, yeah, the current uh, bottleneck I'm working on. I'm doing like, hey, come in and try the job for an hour. And let's see if it's a good fit. That's how I've been doing it. That makes a lot of sense. I you think, I, I you, think, yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think just the more people I get in, like uh, I'll find, because because it is, an, you know, doing this, I think it is, it's just not for everyone. It's kind of an interesting job. I think it's really good for some people because, you know, it's kind of relaxing. You, you don't have to talk to people, just get into your work. But I think a lot of people also, that's incredibly boring for them and it, it's not the right fit. So, so yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Just trying to find someone that, that works out. Max, I do pay for the hour. So I'm pretty clear, like, this is how much I pay per hour. This is what I expect you to do per hour. And let's try it. And I usually say, if you have, um, like, come try it for an hour. I'm, I'm interviewing multiple people, and I'll let you know if it's a good fit. I want to pick the best person. Come and try it for an hour. I'll pay you for an hour. Um, I'm paying between 25 and 27 an hour. And um, I'm also looking for... Actually, I won't say, because I don't think that's legal. But a certain type of person. Let's see. I'm in California. You got to be careful what I say. I hire the most qualified person. I know HR is watching. Got to be careful. Um, but I definitely have an idea of who I like to hire. And um, yeah. 
who does better, who lasts longer. I think labor is probably cheaper in the US than the UK overall, I would guess. How many people here have help? Johnny, what's up? What are you working on? Yeah, I was raising your hand. I do have help, but yes, uh, working on getting ready for January. Got a lot of my racks loaded for Amazon, just sorting them a little bit, pulling some stuff out to go into eBay lots, uh, working on training my help. That's, like you said, a long process, but they're working out. Um, that's about it. It's the same old, same old every day. Um, the only new component going in is um, I'm going to have to source more for uh, Amazon coming in January, and I'm having my listings go up to 50. So I'm trying to juggle that before the January hits so I can just do it. Love it. I just put my criteria in the chat so we don't talk about it on YouTube. Um. As far as that goes, I have a short list of mental people to hire because I look for people that hustle either at fast food or at a bank or any yeah. horrible job. Yeah. If they're doing that there for crap pay, they'll do that here for better pay and be happier doing it. Yeah, if you um, find anybody with quick serve restaurant experience, they crush it so much easier. Yeah. This job is so easy. Pretty much. Uh, Jen, what's up? What are you working on? Um, I am, uh, I had been having good sales last week. I am continuing, I'm continuing to unpack my personal life. And because I've spent the entire time I've moved in unpacking my business life. So business is set up pretty good. There's still some kinks to work out. Um, but today is the first day where I'm going to have a couple of hours free and I'm going down to the bins and gonna try that as a sourcing venue today. Um, sourced the last two days, cause those are great sale days at a few of my thrifts around here. But I wanna see if the bins will work. It's super, super crowded, but I figure I get over there first thing in the morning and be out of there in a couple of hours. And if I've got some handbags, great. Um, but continuing to unpack my personal life is the thing that keeps getting pushed to the back. And I think it's making me a little unhappy so I think I need to push that up to the front and start carving out a few hours every day to get my house set up because I got a great place here, a great place. I got a yard. My landlord has a, a new Australian shepherd for my border collie Molly to play with. Um, it's, it's great. And, but I, it's not great with all these bins and the lack of packing. So that's what I'm working on is trying to get my personal life up to speed with where my business life feels like it's heading. I love it. Can you get done with your eBay by noon so you can work on your personal life after that? Um, that is the goal. However, I am in the midst of preparing for a competition on Sunday, a skating competition. We got practices all week um, and I'm not fitting real well into my costume. So <laughs> Uh, got to take care of that. And um, so I'm not sure this week getting done at noon is possible. Getting done by two is possible. So I am carving out two hours every day from now through Sunday's competition. And then next week it's done by noon and then I'm done. And then my personal life is the afternoon. And then at five o'clock at night, I'm going to make myself dinner, feed the dog, go for a walk. And then I'm going to relax for the night and actually do something like Oh my God, fun, fun. I'm going to actually have fun next week. What the hell is that? I know, is is, right? <laughs> what is up with that? The priorities are all whacked. eBay makes you whacked. Reselling makes you crazy. It's a constant struggle. What is fun for you guys? What do you guys like to do to unwind? Jen, is it skating for you? Oh, I love to skate, guys. I love it. It's exercise. It's social because I've got a lot of people that do it. Um, I've got a very heavy social media circle that I in communication with. I have friends from all over the world. So yeah, skating's huge. I also salsa dance a lot, but that's only like once a month. So I don't know, okay. audiobooks. I love reading, I love listening to audiobooks. 
People like TikTok, the gym, napping, sewing, video games, bowling. Cards Against Humanity is fun. Pickleball. Bowling, archery, selling stuff, making money. Yeah, eBay is fun. So, you know, Tech was talking about retiring one day, and he's still going to have a small eBay store for fun. Yeah, but he said he was tired last night. He's tired. And I, I get that. He's been grinding for years. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane how much he's done. But I mean, I meet people like that, that they're either asleep or working. Right? When they're with family, they're still working because family to them is still a job. Like, you know, make sure your family is fed, make sure that you're going to baseball games, you're going to piano practice. That's all considered work too. Your relationship with your significant other, that's work too. Yeah, he does a lot. What's bar and rock habit? Okay. Drinking at the bar oh, and yeah. <laughs> looking for rocks. Oh, I love it. Has anybody ever used a metal detector? I've never tried that. I wonder if that's fun on the beach. Shelly coaches college softball in the spring. That's awesome. Oh, awesome. She has uh, season tickets to the Cincinnati Bengals. That's great. Yeah, it just seems like I think work and providing value is really useful. Even people who super duper made it, they still, you know, a portion of their day is still helping. Hanley's a dance mom in her spare time. I love it. Grady, what are you working on? Um, uh, working on getting ahead. Like 20 a day, everything's like smoothly flowing now after a few months. So now I'm trying to get padding a few extra days ahead. And then once I feel like I can check off all those boxes, then maybe move up a little bit, but well, going good. Grady, your office is beautiful. <laughs> really? That's my living room, too. <laughs> Thank you. It looks nice. Jamie, Sully Vintage, what are you up to? Hopefully you can chat. Hi. What yeah, I'm on? just uh, doing my lessons. Yeah. I'm trying to... I changed my shipping career because in the UK here, we've got um, Royal Mail, who I've been using since the beginning, is, well, I think they're going to close down because they're they're striking for higher pay, but yep. they've been told that they're not going to get higher pay, so they're probably going to close down, and they're like the biggest one in the UK. Wow. So James gave me some advice, and I started using um, Every. And I've cut my shipping process down from like four minutes a parcel to like less than a minute. Wow. Just label printer. It's like on straight away, just doing it through eBay. So that's good. And then I've changed to, um, my sales have like doubled from doing, I was doing three day handling, but now I'm doing one uh, same day shipping before 9am mm -hmm. or it's like the next day. And then 60 day free returns and a 10% off store wide coupon. So, yeah, James has really helped with that, Nicole. I love it. That's great. Yeah, switching to one day handling and switching carriers and doing everything on eBay for shipping. I think eBay shipping is the fastest. It's so quick. Like, I was doing royal mail and you can't even it doesn't automatically dispatch because it's on a separate website so i'd have to pay one of my staff members to take it to the post office uh. and i have to write down the person's name on the parcel match the label with the parcel and yeah. it was taking so long and i'd have to then manually go into ebay and write the tracking in and yeah. that just takes that's such a long process yeah but on the eBay when it automatically does it and I can take it to a parcel shop and they just scan it. I took 80 yesterday and the woman scanned them in like five minutes. Mm. It was, it was really good. 
I love it. Yeah, anytime you can streamline shipping, it really That's helps correct. the process. Yeah, massively so. Kevin, what's up? What are you working on? Yes, you. Uh, I'm working on uh, trying to improve my, my feedback, like I was talking about yesterday. That's uh, really just what I'm focusing on from uh, from now until it improves. But, um, I just feel like that's important. Like, like, um, like, I got a lot of other things going good, taking pictures at a good speed, shipping, at, I mean, I'm listening at a good speed and um, everything like that. So um, I have um, maybe about 10, 10 negative feedbacks within the past year. And uh, it's been, my feedback has been over one year. And I called eBay and they told me that the feedbacks were going to come off at the end of the year. I got January 1st. So I'm just, um, just keep on pushing and keep it mindful to reach out to every customer and take care of every customer very well. So I do not have a, no possibility of getting a negative from here on out. You know what I mean? I love it. Taking care of your account health is, is key. Yes, yes. Cool. I learned that from you. <laughs> Bill, what's up? What are you working on? Hey, good morning. So, uh, the bulk of what I'm doing now, besides my normative listing, is to trying to maximize the listings. Um, I realized that my titles needed to be fixed on on almost all of my 6,000 items. So I'm doing bulks of those every day. And then, uh, you know, I, I delist and uh, relist, sell similar relist to keep my items under 30 days. And, uh, but you know, you can only do 200 of those at a time. So it takes me a while to do that. So that's what, last night I did 500. So I, I do a certain number every day. But that that title and oh my pricing is totally out of bounds. So in that maximization, I'm working on the title, and then basically dropping pricing on everything. So how are you approaching that? The oldest and newest? Um, yeah, the oldest date. So uh, I did uh, like October 16th. I have I have items that have been on the site since October 16th. So I'm bringing all those. I'm delisting and then relisting those. And, um, I, you know, I get now it's interesting is my, uh, my views went from 12 million down to 8 million. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know how that happened, but, but did your sales stay the same or go up or go down? Sales have pretty much stayed the same. Uh, so, you know, no substantial uh, difference really, you know, one day's a few more, one day's a few less kind of a thing. It's actually um, much better to have lower traffic and the same sales. Yeah. That yeah. means eBay trusts you and they're giving you, you know, high converting traffic. If they, if you have more um, traffic and less sales, then they, they feel like they're wasting traffic on you. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Seth, what's up? What are you working on? Hey, Chris. Um, uh, it's gone good. Not as uh, not as busy as it was last year. But, um, just just working on the on my a ASP and getting done faster every day is what I two things I've been working on throughout this fourth quarter. When do you want to get done each day? What's that? When do you want to get done each day? Um. Well, I have a schedule like. From 4.30 to 4.30, 12 hours. So the faster I get done, the more listings I'm just going to put up. So I'm just trying to maybe get get up to 60 next year. I'm at 50 right now. So I'll Love just, it. yeah, I'll just continue to keep the same work schedule. It's working fine for me. So. And do you have help? No, no. No, I I'm solo. You're solo? Yeah. No. Caleb, I don't know if you can chat. Caleb, I was going to ask, when you hire a new person, are you going to try to double from 50 to 100? I don't know if you can chat. 
Um, yeah, I can still hear you. Uh, so I've thought about it. I, I probably, yeah, I definitely will get there. I want them to, they should be able to do a hundred a day after like an eight hours. Um, so it kind of just depends. I feel like 20 an hour, um, to me is about, you know, the most they could do, uh, maybe a little bit less, um, but around that range. So if they're going to be working four hours, I want them to get to that, to that level. Four um, hours, part time. Yeah. So, well, right now, the, the first, the lady I, I have, that's going to be starting, she's going to be working weekends. So she's going to be working, um, about two, eight hour shifts. So I won't be able to jump right up to hundred, but I do, but to answer your question, I do want to go right to hundred, but I have to have the people in place. Um, I think with the extra room, I could do it. I'm, I'm kind of getting more inventory easier now. So like, as long as I have time, um, you know, I could do, I could get close to that myself if I don't have to go sourcing, but I still have to spend a lot of time doing that. So it, it, it really would just depend on the help. If, uh, Oh, either the help or the inventory. But I have thought about it. I would like to go right to 100. I think um, cash flow wise, I could do that. And um, I, so I, I, I at least will jump up 25 right away. So Okay. Yeah, both of my workers that I'm going to keep, I'm going to give one lady her two weeks notice today. Um, and I'm going to keep two of the three. And both of the two of the three that I have work 32 hours a week. And um, I'm comfortable with that. Like, um, I think I want three part-time people and I got to find one more. The lady that I have today that I'm letting go, she's all right. Um, but she doesn't get along with the other team members and that's a problem. Yeah, that makes sense. I, it, it's good. I like hearing you talk about, um, you know, you're just employee environment and stuff. Cause that's, that's some new things I'm navigating and trying to, trying to figure out. So, uh, yeah, that's, and, and like you're, um, your description of your employee, like I've, I've thought the same thing. Cause I, I, I don't know why it just like, it's like, it just seems like it's a better fit for that type of person. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure why I feel that way. And I haven't hired that many people, but like, it, it makes sense to me that younger, younger people would struggle. Um, just, just being, I, I don't want to micromanage um, my employees. I want to find someone that, you know, and, and this may be, too hard or really difficult, but I want to find someone that wants to be here and I can pay um, a good wage and then they just come in and do their work. And, um, and I, I think that's probably difficult to find with the younger audience. So. Have you thought that maybe it's that at, we older person aren't looking for a career. So we're not, we're, we know what we're getting into a younger person, maybe in the back of their mind really is looking for a career and doesn't see, it sees this as a temporary stepping stone until I find for them a career because if if they were to ask you chris this is my first day where can i expect to be in your company in a year you'd say uh maybe we're going to add photo <laughs> and that would not satisfy me if i were looking for a career path but as a senior hey that sounds great to me it fills my need fills your need yeah i, I agree younger people in general are more transient because they're, you know, now people are changing jobs seven times in their career. It used to be just two or three. Johnny, what's up? I have a question since we're on the employee topic. Yep. Would it be smarter for me, because I'm going to get a second one here. Would it be smarter for me to do the sourcing, come back and do eBay or stay here, have the new person do the sourcing and I do the processing? Uh, I think you do the sourcing and processing because the sorting is the hardest part. It is. So it's very hard to outsource sourcing. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, sorting. Sorting, yeah. Sorting is yeah. definitely harder. Um, so have them do the sourcing, you said? Bring it back? The last thing that you outsource is the sorting. So uh, because it's, I mean, Textile does the sorting. No, it's no, just, the, the sourcing, not sorting. sourcing. I guess you could. Um I've never outsourced sourcing before. Because the issue for me is I have to go long distances to get it and to bring it back. So the drive times, the time sink, essentially. I see. So have you tried hiring a buyer? No, this would be my first attempt at it, but I wanted some advice before I pulled the trigger on it. Well, I guess they need to make enough to support themselves. Right. 
So how many, how much are they, are they getting paid per piece? Are they getting paid? Um, hourly. Hourly? Yeah. So with, with the quota or how does that work? Uh, quota, 315 pieces a week to go into Amazon. 315 pieces a week. How do they find it? <clears throat> I have a software program. They just have to scan it and bring oh, interesting. Back, bread, uh, stay home or leave it there. I love it. That, that, that definitely would work. That's a perfect work from home job. Right. They just have to drive, scan, bring it back here, and then they can go home. That's great. Yeah. I say just just you try it and come up with a day in the life and then give that day in the life to them. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. It's a lot easier to do your job when your boss can do it. That's the biggest part. Carrie, do you want to chat? <clears throat> I don't know if she can chat. She's in the dungeon. Yeah, I just got set up. I'm ready to start my day with pictures and then head over to listings. What are you working on uh, outside of that? <laughs> um, I am just maintaining uh, my 50 a day and just keeping up with that. Uh, I've transitioned Kyle to be full-time sourcer. Now that I have him full-time, um, that way I can double my listings. So, and I don't really personally enjoy sourcing, so, and he does. So he's wow. going to be going out every day, just sourcing and finding me stuff, and I'll process it all. That's great. Yeah. So how did you convince him to do it? I didn't. <laughs> he, he loves sourcing. So I was like, hey, well, okay, I guess what I said was, uh, yesterday I woke up saying, uh, you know, I think we've been doing it full time together for a week now. Uh, how can we improve? And at the time we were like doing everything, like going around sourcing together, thinking like, oh, we'll go through everything faster. But actually we were wasting a lot of time because he could be sourcing. It'll take him a little bit longer to process through the stuff like while he's sourcing. Yep. Um, but then I'm knocking out this half of eBay at the same time. So it just made more sense. And he's like, yeah, why didn't we do that sooner? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was always the issue with, um, Rinzi. Like they did every single thing together. Mm -hmm. and that's really the same as just one person. Yeah, I know. Cause at the bins, like I can go through the whole bins, get everything, check out with like 20 plus items in 45 minutes. But with him, I can do it in 30. I'm like, so we saved 15 minutes. Or I could just be home doing eBay. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm trying to get. Go ahead. Oh, God. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I'm trying to get it done by noon. That's it. Okay, you go. Okay. I was just saying, how do you balance the family life too? Because you're doing that as well. Um, I have one son he's he just started kindergarten this year so it is definitely a lot easier uh i definitely don't know how i would do it with the both of them because they feed off of each other um but with my daughter she is heading into kindergarten next year but she is super adaptable she whenever i was just sourcing like doing everything um, by myself she adapted really well she just said okay like after a week or two of doing the same routine. She's like, okay, this is what we do. Um, so I had to get through the grumbleness that she gave me going to the bins every day. And then she stopped complaining. And now she's uh, finding that the bins is actually a fun place to be at. So that's helped me manage uh, it a bit better is having the same routine so that she adapts to it. Uh, and then I just try to get all my stuff done as fast as I can that way. I have more time to spend with them. Henley says having two kids is the worst because they feed off each other and hype each other up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Seth says that he wants to follow tech and get a system so that he can do a hundred a day in a few years. That's a cool goal. Johnny. Oh, I just forgot to put the hand down from the earlier question. Sorry. Yeah, all good. Sweet. So guys, this morning calls about figuring out what works for you and your own schedule. And with kids, it's, it's definitely a different type of puzzle. 
Um, for me personally, I think that I don't, I need to figure out an unwinding process at the end of the day so I can go to sleep better. I need a nighttime routine. So I'll work on that. My work routine is pretty solid, but my own personal go to sleep routine is pretty weak. So I need to work on that, like different things I can do to unwind and actually go to sleep. Chris, you have a kid. You had to train her to go to sleep. I'm not kidding you. Everything I learned, I learned from how I managed my kids. So what do you do with your child? You don't play with her rambunctiously just before she goes to bed. You read her a story. <laughs> so try to do those same things with your own routine. This means your kid to go to sleep without you having to be in there and, and entertaining her for four hours is probably going to work with you. You're a good parent. Be a good parent to yourself. Yeah, that's true. There's no adult sleep training. So I need to sign up for that and figure out. Yeah, I guess it's the same for her. No, no screen time, read a story, get in your pajamas. Well, it sounded like it might be more than just training yourself if you were just sitting there in bed from eight to twelve. Yeah. You you might you might want to consider uh like taking some melatonin or something. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid any medication, but um, yeah, it might be interesting to <clears throat> try some kind of a sleep aid. Um, yeah. But I'm definitely thinking about, um, I think I have to read. Brian is right. So I've got some good books. I'm also wondering what um, what kind of books are good to read before bed. Probably not. Hey, Chris. Go ahead. Hey, I, I um, yeah, I, I've actually, I was listening. I, I was going to mention it the other day when I was watching you on a live about the sleep thing. And I don't know if this will help or not. I'm kind of the same way. Like I've had trouble sleeping. Um, especially, I, I think it has something to do with business. Like if I keep thinking about it while I'm trying to go to sleep, like sometimes I'll get, in my own head and then it like it, it wakes me up i don't know if i have an anxiety attack or what but one thing that and I, i'm the same way i try to stay off like i don't want to have to take medicine or something if i don't absolutely have to but one thing that has worked for me and like pretty much always work i have to do it religiously now is when i ready for sleep i have a fiction book if if i have like a self-help book or something like that it doesn't work but a completely like fiction book the more fantasy the better really and I read a little bit of that and it's it like kind of just takes me to that place that has nothing to do with actual life <laughs> and and I don't know if that if that will help you or not but it, it definitely is like a, a fail proof for me so I, I have to stick to that every night all right check out fantasy yeah I, I don't recommend hyping yourself up and making yourself want to get out of bed and Make no, it improve next before bed. You replaced your phone with a book while in bed. That's a good one. Yeah, I definitely can't be on my phone. The worst would be TikTok. If you're on TikTok or looking at shorts, you're probably not going to sleep. That is really addicting for your brain. Brandon says melatonin helps you go to sleep, but doesn't help you stay asleep. Oh, watch crime docs. <clears throat> I went through like uh, maybe <clears throat> a couple of months where I listened to true crime. That was interesting. Those are insanely popular. Jack and Coke nightcap. I haven't really been drinking. Yeah, I think that's good. Painting sounds good. Okay, guys. Do you have a Samsung TV? Go ahead. Do you have a Samsung TV? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Turn on the, the Bob Ross channel, 30-minute sleep timer. Okay. <laughs> 